So today is the day that we have a double class, okay? So I'm going to stop when the Salah comes, and then as soon as we finish offering Salah, please don't have conversations, okay? Come and sit down. Let me get my kids off for get Oh, thank you. Come sit down so that we can get it in, and then break, and then go home and time fashion you for the no people, specifically for the ladies. We want to make sure that you guys are safe, and, and that type of thing. Strict on our time uh, a little bit more now, Sean. Okay? Uh, Nam? Nam. Nam. What lesson number is this? Five. Five. Here's our fifth lesson. Nam? Kamsa. Kamsa. Kul wahid. Wahid. La 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 la. Yani? Kalliduni. Kalliduni. Wahid. Wahid. Itnan. Itnan. Kullukum. Anti, anti, Ava, anti, Nafsik, Wahid, Wahid, Ithna, Ithna, Thalatha, 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 Thalatha. This means you're from from America. Thalatha, Thalatha. Everybody's going like this. Yeah. Don't do that in LA. Thalatha, Thalatha. Arba'a, Arba'a, Khamsa, Khamsa, Sitta, Sitta, Saba'a, Saba'a, Thamaniya, Thamaniya, Tisa'a, Tisa'a, Ashara, Ashara. Let's do it again. Wahid, Wahid, Ithnan, Ithnan, Thalatha, Thalatha, Arba'a, Arba'a, Khamsa, Khamsa, Sitta, Sitta, Saba'a, Saba'a, Thamaniya, There's nothing from doing it and leaving off doing it except for a person exercising his or her jaw. Okay? So let's practice. We're going to keep doing those. So now we're in our fifth lesson. This is a darsul khams. Mahu? Darsul khams. Eh? Khams. Al khams. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Sabur. Haliyan amsaha. Now, laka dal. Kulu laka dal. Laka, laka dal. Hey, wa shukra. Hey, wa antum fahim tuni. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. Kepa halakum. لا بأس الحمد لله شكرا جزيلا ما شاء الله أنا أبو توبة مخلص وأنتم ما شاء الله أنا أستاذ أدرس اللغة والقرآن وأنتم ما شاء الله الحمد لله بارك الله فيكم أنا فلان من نيويورك ومن أين أنتم Masha Allah, Barakallah Fikum. Falnaqul, 
فل نقول كأن كلكم قالوا نحن من درها مثلا هل فهمتموني؟ نعم أيوة مثلا سنقول إننا كلنا جميعا من درها فهمت؟ نعم أيوة وإذا قلنا ذلك فسأقول لكم إذا لو سمحتم قولوا لو سمحتم سبقا قد درسنا كلمة سمحة صحيح صحيح نعم أم لا سم اسمح لي قولوا اسمحوا لي اسمحوا لي اسمحي لي سمح الله لي ولكم نعم الحمد لله فكلمة اسمح everybody say اسمح so we learned that word previously right it's a polite word I said to it's to allow something right to give because you have see the language of the Quran shows a, a, a lot of respect to the speak to the one being spoken to don't we say min fadlik what does that mean we, we translate it as what please please but that's wick 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 whack right that, that's remember we're not going to stick to a word the language is to give us what a concept a united understood concept so the concept here with ismahli min fadlik arjuka law samah all these terms is that you are a person of substance does that make sense yes. and because you have such character you have so much to give you know some people can't give right they can't give nothing if they're going to open the door somebody says hold the door for me and hurry up and get through the door so it could slam. I'm not holding the your slave. Right? They don't have enough in them to hold the door for somebody else. You get my point? No. They're driving out of the car and they're not in a necessary rush, but now the other guy's like, Didi, can I get in front of you? No, you can't get in front of me. I'm not letting you in. Man, are you in a rush, man? Right? My wife's pregnant. About. Should have got to the hospital. This person has no fuddle. You get the point? They have no, no excess to give. Because we say, we say they have nothing to give of themselves. So when someone says to you, men fuddle, you guys come over in the front. We don't want y'all looking at the computers. We don't trust. No, no, come on over here. They're pouting. No, 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 come on over here. Get away from that guy over there. He might smack you. He's notorious for doing that. He even nodded, yes. Come on over here. So, fumble is your ability because someone comes, remember back in the days, did the neighbor have to come in and actually ask you for sugar? They just have to come and say, yo, I need some sugar. What was the assumption? That you if you had it, you no matter how much, unless you had already planned to make a pie, and if that, then don't make the pie. You know what I'm saying? Because I need some to finish dinner. Then it was like, well, how much can I get? Not how much you got. Isn't that the assumption? Yeah. And were they wrong? No. no. No, they weren't seen as assumptions or over entitled. They knew their rights. And they knew that you had fuddle that you would give. So this is the concept in Arabic. When you say to somebody, min fuddle from your grandiosity, you know, from your, the excess that I know you have, it's from your great character to give, you know? You can, you can handle this to allow me such and such and so and so. Does that make sense? The same thing if you say someone stepped on your foot or you stepped on someone's foot and you say, Ismahli. Okay, Ismahli, please, you know, I made a social mistake here, an accident, allow, even if I did it wrong. If I intended, I said something out of wrong, and I say, Ismah, you know, oh, oh, allow me, permit me, just, you know, wipe away. Why? Because you can. Now, when I say to you in the beginning, when you start to ask somebody for something, you can use, this is a term you can use, Law Samah. Say it? Law Samah. Law Samah. Now, you see, we're using the word Samah again, right? We're using that, your permission, your grant. Why? Because you have the position. 
The assumption here, the understanding, the concept is you have the position to allow or deny. Okay? You are in that position. And I am accepting that. Okay? I am recognizing and acknowledging your authority in this position here. Does that make sense? And I am now begging you. Okay? It's something similar. We say, I beg your pardon. Right? The term is begging your pardon. Why? Because you have the right to say no or yes. But we know how good you are, so I'm going to say this as a, as a formality, and I know you're going to allow it. Lau samah. You get the point, guys? Lau samah. So it's not proper that we say, oh, that means please. No. What we just now expressed is what it means when someone comes to you and say, lau samah, min fadlik. You guys get it? And you can use both of them. You can use arajuka lau samah min fadlik. You can use all three. Because all is it showing, and, and the, the Arabic language is a very expressive language. The more you use, the more we like it. Okay? And it shows that we re that you respect us. We, it's, it's all about the relationship. Right? My mama used to say respect is a two-way street. Right? So you take the one way, then there's no room for anyone to give you any respect back. You took the one-way street. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. yes. So likewise, you show this respect to the other person. Say, Lau Samah. They're going to Samah. They're going to say, they, they're, now they're caught up. Now you handcuff them, kind of. It's like sometimes you would see, I, I watch a lot of error pieces and read history. You would hear a prisoner talking to the Amir al Mu'mineen or the, the leader of the Mongols while he's tied up and chained up, talking tough. You say, man, what do you know what I'm Why? Because he said, yo, you, 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 you gonna hit me while I'm tied up? And then the guy's like, no, you know? You're not gonna do that because what? That takes away from his manhood, right? It makes him less of a, of a noble that I'm gonna pick on a helpless individual. Does that make sense? Yeah. When they had that because of some words he said. That may be true. You know, one guy said, oh, you're gonna kill me for speaking the truth? You know? So they said, well, get him out of here. <laughs> out of the honor and respect they had for themselves and their maqam. And this is what Arabic brings back. Follow me, everybody? Atumai. No, no, no. No, 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 so normally in a conversation, when you're talking to somebody, say, hey, man, how, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. Fine, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, where you from, man? I don't even know what's going on. Now, I took the calamata, be on the calamata, please, Mark. You say, you say he's from Goldsboro, right? Goldsboro, where is that? Isn't that the next question? No. Nah. What you, what you say, it's in North Carolina, right? That's Goldsboro in North Carolina? Okay, see, I, I don't know. You know, so, it's then the person, the next question will be what? Where you? After they say where Goldsboro is, what's the next question gonna be? What is it like? Where is it close to? Describe that city to me. Right? Isn't that correct? Yeah. You're talking about, normally we're speaking in Arabic, normally we're speaking to someone who's not from the United States, right? Or doesn't know the United States so well. So it would tend to, to, to reason with, would say that the next thing is like, subhanAllah, you know, America, anta in America, because really, you know, especially people of color, you, you go overseas and you think somebody's gonna know you're from America because you're brown. Again, the, the naivety and the assumption of African quote unquote Americans. First of all, Americans in general, when they say America, they tend to ignorantly think that America is a country. America is not a country. It's the Western Hemisphere, the entire Western Hemisphere. Two I thought we was free. What happened, was he? I thought you were gonna turn that off. Oh, mashallah. Sure. Didn't he say, oh, y'all took the fans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I thought those were all connected like that. So normally when we say America, we erroneously and na naively and ignorantly put our foot in our mouth and say, I'm from America. And the other person's like, okay, that, that I mean, Canada or Peru? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that's right. You, you get my point? 
And then you're like, what's wrong with you? No, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? It, in, it includes Canada and all Argentina and Peru and all those other places. What's wrong? Don't you realize that? Well, I'm brown from the boogie down. Well, so? Then you must be from Brazil then, right? No, but I'm brown. Do you realize, do African Americans, quote unquote African Americans, realize that the most Negroes in the Western Hemisphere are in Brazil? Yes. yes yep. That twice as many, quote unquote, blacks that they have in the United States live in Brazil, and they came on the same ship we came on. You get the same exact ship. Just took few of us this way, the others there, most of them went to Brazil. So if you show up overseas and you expect somebody to know, and you say from America, they might say, you know, Donald Bank, you know, La Bess, you know, they might say La Beleza. They might start talking to you in, in, in Portuguese, you know? And you say, yo, you know, what are you doing? Because we think we are the most. So with our own arrogance, we think we're the epitome of the black man on the, on the American continent. Tell me I'm wrong. Mm -mm. Crickets, right? <laughs> Somebody's doing the moonwalk in the back. <laughs> but if we put it in realistic context, we realize we're only, we're not even happy. Because I just mentioned Brazil has twice the number of the exact same people look exactly like us, all the different flavors. That's just Brazil. I didn't mention Mexico, but you know, Belize, Nicaragua, Panama, and all them other countries, all the Caribbean. If we add those together, we're about a third. You know what I'm saying? No, I said yeah. Yeah. Did you guys get my point? Yeah. So that takes the big, the big, you know, arrogance. It should chop it down a little bit. Does that make sense? No. So to say I'm from America, you ain't said nothing. You told us what side of the planet you come from. Now people will understand what you mean by that. But if some, they'll ask you, Wilayatul Mutahida? That's how you say United States. Wilayatul Mutahida? Hulu? Wilayatul Mutahida. What word is in there? Mutahida. Wahid. Or Ahad. Mutahida. Mutahida. What does the Mu stand for? Place. 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 No. Moo. Moo does not mean place. What does moo mean? Muslims? The one that does. The one that, the one that carries the characteristics of ittihad. What is the word ittihad? Ittihad comes from the word wahid. Okay? Why? How did it get there? Hold on, don't write. Let's break it down so that you understand. So we have mutahida. Say that. No, not move. Mutahida. Say night time. Same way we say night time, say mutahida. You see that T? Night time. Say it loud. Night time. Hakatha. MashaAllah. So, mutahida. Okay, so the word here is aha. Aha. Say it. But there's a T there, right? There's a double T. Where did it come from? Okay, the T came this way. In every word in the Arabic language, every verb that begins with a wow, like wahida, like wathika, like waqa, all these words, when you add them into a sentence, you put a tad there instead, and the, and the wow drops off. Don't you saw the word muttaqeen from waqiya? Okay? It's not taqwa, it's waqiyah, wiqayatan, which is a shield or precaution. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. So from waqiyah, we drop the wow and we add a ta to represent the wow. And that's why it says muttaqeen. Muttaqeen. Some quantum person, instead of muttaqeen, you say muttaqeen. Does everybody follow me? Yeah. And so we say that all the time, but we have no clue on where and how we got there. So mu is one that has the quality of ittihad is is ihahada, is that unity. You get it? That oneness. 
And the high here is because it's feminine. Okay? So what do you have there? Ahad is, is what's left. Ahad. Ittahad. Okay? Does everybody follow me? Na'am am la. Kulu la. Kulu. Yani jahiru aswatiku. Jahiru aswatiku. Na'am. Na'am. Alhamdulillah. Because when you say it with some emotion, you remember it. Okay? If you say normal, then your body doesn't recognize nothing happened. Right? But now you did something, it's like, oh, I remember that. Insha'Allah ta'ala. So, Muttahida. Muttahida. Wilayatul Muttahida. Wilayatul Muttahida. Wilaya. Wilaya. And Wilaya is a state or states. Wilayatul Muttahida. Say it. Wilayatul Muttahida. That's how you say the United States. Wilayatul Muttahida. Wilayatul Muttahida. Muttahida. Everybody follow me? Uh -huh. So if you say, I'm from the United States, I'm from the United States. 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 Wilayatu Mutahida. Laura. Wilayatu Mutahida. Ana min wilayatu Mutahida. I'm sorry. Ana min wilayatil Mutahida. Ana min wilayatil Mutahida. You gotta say min. We say min wilayatil Mutahida. Don't whisper at me. Wilayatil Mutahida. Okay. So then next, what if he says I'm from the United States? What are you gonna say next? Yani, yani, fame. Aina. Aina fi wilayatu mutahida. Aina. Aina fi wilayatu mutahida. Wilayatu mutahida kabira. Naam. Alaysa kedalik? Naam. La, don't say naam. If I say alaysa kedalik? Naam. If I say alaysa kedalik, I say, isn't that right? Naam. You know, you say, is it that right? You know, is it not? Is it not? Then you say, bella. Bella. The response is, and alaysa kedalik? Bella. If you want to disagree, say, kella. Kella. Strong. Kella. Kella. Alaysa kedalik? Kella. Bella. Bella. We all want a million dollars. Alaysa kedalik? Bella. 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 We all want to get to Jannah. Alaysa kedalik? Bella. Bella. And they would say to the Prophet used to ask his companions, and they would say to him, Bella, Ya Rasulullah. Okay? They would say that back to him, Bella. And if you wanted to disagree, they'd say, Kella. Right? So, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So, if you ask them, Aina fi wilayatul mutahida. Aina. Aina tasbunu anta fi wilayatul mutahida. Where did you live? In the wilayatul mutahida. And then you say, Ana fi Greensboro, Greensboro, I'm from Durham. And the next question is, Lau samah. Bulu? Lau samah. Lau samah. So weirdly. So weirdly. What does so weird mean? So weird. Make a picture. Make a picture. So weird. It's like picture that. So weird. So weird. Which means draw a picture. So weirdly. So weirdly. Madinata. Or, or just say the name of the place. Somewhere leave Durham. Somewhere leave Durham. Sif, Lao Samah. Lao Samah. Lao Samah. Lao Samah. Everybody understands what that means, right? This is how we started off. We don't have a word for it. We have a concept. Lao Samah. Hey, what you asking this guy for? No, he asked me. Oh. <laughs> well, I can't get on him. <laughs> It's like the ruling class is like the ruling in, 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 in Juma. Somebody comes to you in Juma, tries to talk to you, what do you say? Nothing. 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 You don't say, shh. <laughs> you gonna break your Juma. <laughs> you see stuff like that. I grew up from Master Tafla. You can all types of stuff. Listen, ah, be quiet. <laughs> but you know, you're not supposed to speak during the, the khutbah. Alhamdulillah, you're a See, I lost my chain of thought. No, no problem. Lao Samah. Shukran Jazeel. So we have the concept of Lao Samah, right? We're not translating it anymore, right? Take your hand off your jaw. 
In a class where we're talking about speaking, you cannot put your hand on your jaw. Why? What's that suddenly going to stop you from doing? Speaking. Speaking. Speaking and joining in. Okay? So you want to do all types of acts. Like if I say I want to study, but I start studying and I get under the covers. And I'm in my bed and I turn the heat up and I open up the book with no pictures. What's going to happen here? Yeah, that's all. You know, that, then there is not much studying going to be doing except the inside of my eyelids, right? That's the type of study. So there's positions for learning, just like there's positions for relaxing. And you don't want to be in a relaxing position when you're in a study position. You get my point, guys? Yeah. Hey, alhamdulillah, you rabbil alameen. So we have law samah. Sit, lee, sit, lee, durham. We're going to pretend. Kulana, huna. Sanusawwir. 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 Durham. Durham. Okay, we're going to pretend like Durham is our city, like we're all from here, and we're going to describe it. Okay? Now, the, the beautiful thing about every city, every city has a history, a story. And you should learn the story about your city because that's part of describing and making you rememberable, right? Or memorable, not rememberable, but memorable. Does anybody here know where Durham gets his name? I'm sure you guys do. Dr. 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 Durham. Dr. what? Bartlett Durham. Bartlett Durham, the first African, uh, what do you call it, doctor in the United States of America, right? And it's very interesting, right? that his name was not only Durham, but they named the city after him, and it's a medical city now. It's one of the main things that the medical research has done is the main Ratsun Mal of Medina, right? It's the main business of the city is that and education in, in the black market that was here, you know, the, 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 the what do you call it? What Black Wall Street was here. A lot of people don't know that, that it was here longer than it was anywhere else. Does that make sense? No. So, deep, and, and, and I, I see some hands getting ready to start talking about history. Now, that's a conversation piece, isn't it? Yes. yes. Okay, well then, script it. Okay? Script it. That's your city. That distinguishes you. And then the person hears and says, SubhanAllah, Tashallah, now. We have a noble here. Just like we repeat, meet somebody and they said they came from Mecca, we say, SubhanAllah, we got a Meccan up in here. We honor them because of the city is the famousness of, and our attachment to that city, the history of that city, right? Okay then, you know? We get a Syrian in here, we honor them, right? Because what we know they're coming, somebody from the wrong high, Muslims who got oppressed and were now both people, we honor them because of what we know about their situations, right? In Bangladesh and all the different people, somebody from CRA, anybody that we have famous about whatever their situation, and now you describe <coughs> your city, you say where you're from, now people say, mashallah, tabarakallah, look who I'm dealing with today. Look who I had the honor and the good fortune of meeting today. Get a chair for the sheriff. Hey, I'm sorry. Get it for him anyway, no matter what he said. You know, the American thing, the, the Western thing we're taught is, somebody comes to your house, we don't go get them nothing to drink. We say, you thirsty? What are they gonna say? What does his honor demand him to say? No, no thank you, I'm good, right? Or we but say, I just can't, I'm gonna get out of here, I'm gonna stop off at the Pickley Wizard and get me something to drink, right? <laughs> stop. But, now what the, the rest of the world, what will the rest of the world do? Yeah, they'll say, hold on one second, and go in the next room, you don't even know, they might be cooking. You know, they might come back. Next thing you know, somebody comes in, they have drink and water and tea and the coffee and they put it there in front of you and then back around and say, you thirsty? You get my point? Now, if you really ain't thirsty, you have a real choice now. Okay? And if you, and so it, there, there's a thing that we've lost doing that because we cheat. You know, it's a type of cowardice. We don't want to share, I'm scared, all I got is a little bit left. You know, I was planning on eating that. <laughs> right? We, that's the last piece. You can't give somebody your last piece. We, we got lots of, lots of reasons what we do and stuff like that. And it takes away from our honor, basically. It takes away from our honor. It makes us real. It doesn't give us any fubble, like we said, right? It takes away from our, our fubble. So we have to, Islam is supposed to re bring that back to us, you know, so we need to, to, to put that back in its place. 
sadly, we're so bad now, we don't even visit each other. You know, so we're all these, this, this whole isolated world and everything, we don't really even know each other. You know, so, and they say that a visit tell you more than a conversation, right? You don't have to ask about how somebody's doing. You go visit them and they'll, you see how they're doing for real, you know? And that will tell you, you know, more about what you can do for that person and or what they may not need. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, alhamdulillah, may Allah give us back to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the humanity that we desire. Another thing, I just, before I forget, there's a, I sent it to you. There's a, this weekend in Charlotte, they're having a, like a whole bunch of African nations are coming over to have like a thing, it's called the R400 Summit. They're bringing a lot of African uh, uh, world leaders are gonna be in Charlotte and they're gonna be talking about how the Africans in the United States and the rest of the diaspora can cooperate with those people over there. And I, I, I fear that our Christian brothers are gonna try to overwhelm the situation and, and do things like that. So I already wrote them a letter and told them that, you know, okay, it seems on their program that they, they said we're gonna have a worship service on Sunday. I said, oh, you know, Africans 47% Muslim. You mentioned you're gonna have a worship Sunday service on Sunday, you know, where's the thing for the Muslims? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, so if you want us to be, you know, involved, you need to put a, a worship place where we can offer our five daily salam. So he wrote me back and said, this hour over, overlooked the, the situation, and we're making a, a place, we're gonna accommodate you, and make sure that there's a place that you guys can offer salah and everything like that. And I told him that I would share that, that information, now that they told us that I would share that information with, you know, Durham, and Greensboro, and stuff like that, so that we would, be involved. I said, if you guys can't, you know, we want to support you, but we don't want to be marginalized by our people. You get my point? Yeah. And so, especially if y'all want to do business with our people, those are our. We have, we have those forty-seven percent of our brothers. You know, and so we don't want you to force your, you know, your, your things on us, and force the pork under the table with us. And we have to be involved with that because we know those types of practices. You know, we know those things that go on. So again. If we don't do something now in the inception, in five years, it's too late. They have already have a 10 year, 20 year, 30 year contract in those places. And you could have gotten the door, but you didn't. You know, so you know, need to pay attention to that. Yes, sir. Is this starting from this weekend? Starts Friday. Mm -hmm. Starts Friday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You know, and they have a president's uh, luncheon where, uh, and, and a meeting that you get to meet these certain, if they said representatives from 55 different um, countries. Mm -hmm. And you get to meet them and kick it with them, inshallah. So we won't have Saturday, I'm Saturday. coming. I, man, I don't break class for Nathan unless it's really, really hard. You know, I'm going to go and I'm going to run back here and then I'm going to go back there. This class is going to be an hour on Sun Saturday and then I'm driving over there. Inshallah, there, back over there. Fee? Yeah, there's a, things are fee. Ain't nothing free but, but, but trouble. And you got to pay to get out of that. You know what I'm saying? Where would I find the information? It's online. It's online. I think it's R400. Whoever can, whoever knows about it, you guys talk about it now. It's called R400movement or something like that. Dot com. Look it up, and, and 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 it should be there. I know it's like it's like fifty dollars for the, some of the luncheons and stuff like that. Okay, let's go again from our conversation. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum Wa alaikum Ismi Abu Tawba Mukhlis. Masmukum? MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Ana Fulani min New York. Min Aina Antum? Ana Fulani Dorf. Velayatum Mutahida. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah, he will kill him. Yani, Fi A will lie. A will lie, Antum. في الدرهم نعم ما شاء الله أين الدرهم قريب من واشنطن دي سي excellent way to do excellent because you say North Carolina they're gonna ah أين North Carolina you get it 
Most people around the world know like three three places. Nah, Anybody know the three places or four places? Name Washington, Washington, New York, New York. Now you did it, LA. You did it backwards. You did it backwards. What's the first place they know? New York, New York. New York. So city so nice they had to name it twice. New York. Right? New York. Okay. Then after that they know what? Washington. Washington. Then after that. Chicago. Chicago. What else? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. That's about it. And then Durham. <laughs> and now Durham. And now You guys get my point? Yeah, yeah. So when you like what they did, he said, yo, where is it? Because he wanted in Washington, DC. Do you have to get detailed and say, well, you know, Virginia, do my North Carolina? No, they don't care. You know? But even in the Washington DC. Good. Hi. Right. Got it. Okay? On my map, I see Washington DC. Oh yeah, I see it now. In different places in the world, the Adan is different. Yes. And, you know, the Adan in Medina, back in the days, is different than the Adan of Kufa. The Adan that most people hear nowadays is not the Adan of Medina. It's the Adan of Kufa. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Kufa et al. That's the one that you hear most of the times in the Masajid. So, you know, we, again, most of the issues that we have is due to our naivety. You know, and our pigeonholing of Islam, our lack of understanding of true Islamic history, and how much flavor and so much different variety comes into and is allowed in the deen and stuff like that. And, and the more we get to learn, the better it'll be for our comfortability, you know, the relaxedness, and we can appreciate uh, more of, of the world and what's going on, and even understand what's going on today in politics. You know, uh, is there anybody watching what's happening with, in the UN? No. With, with no. most of the countries saying, look, you know, how can we have a hundred and something, ninety something, ninety-one countries in the United Nations and five people making all the five, five countries making all the decisions? You know, what, what if you understand where that comes from? The United Nations was not set up to be United Nations. Anybody remember where it came from? These were the allies. The ones that united to put down the Ottoman Empire, the Islamic Empire, that was their only purpose. And then they were so much good propaganda, they were getting people to join, well join our crew. But it's our crew, ultimately, it's us, for us to maintain control of all the places we made colonies after World War II. That's it. So you could be a son, you could, you could come and be on a junior level, but you'd never be on the decision making level. And now after 100 years, literally 100 years, because uh, Abdul Hamid Khan, the last great Khalifa, died in, in what, 19, 19, 19, 1918, yeah. okay? After Fajr. So it's been 100 years. And he was the one that fought the Masonic order and kept them off for 30 years. 
And then when after they got rid of him, they were able to do all the things they were able to do. After they, went, they, they took all the land, the Balkans, they took all the, 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 the stand, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, all those places, they, 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 they took control of them. They were able to shut down and make Russia and Hungary, and they took all those places out the way. They were able to chop up North Africa and, and take and leave East and West Africa open, right? All of that took place when they took down the Khalifa. And all that affects us, but we don't know our story. We don't know how that story, except that we believe what they have told us, what was World War II. You ask the average American guy, World War II was about Germany, right? No, that was the secondary issue. That was the fight over the pieces of the empire. Because Germany wanted two pieces. And they didn't want to give her two pieces because Germany was friends with the Ottoman Empire. So they came to, to accept the defeat of the Muslims last. So you don't get two pieces. And Germany said, well, yeah, we will. And they started fighting. And that was the other part of it. But the main part was over the destruction and the piecemealing of the Muslim empire, the last great Muslim empire. And anybody can do some research, you, you see exactly what took place at that time and how that affects us even today. So now, how does it affect us? It affects us today because now the Ottoman Empire, which was reduced to Turkey, <coughs> just finished paying all the money back they were supposed to pay for their war debt. They owe zero money to the World Bank. And there's only a few countries in the world that don't owe no money to the World Bank. You get my point? So now that they're free, them in Germany are now homies again. They just signed a strategic agreement. Them in Germany just tried a trade agreement. The world has gone restructured back to what it was before 1918, okay? And now the realities of those things are gonna start coming out more as they start telling their story now, okay? And you're gonna see if you open your eyes, if you just don't listen in English, and you start to you know, listen in different languages, you'll be able to see, understand what's going on and where the world is going. Does that make sense? <coughs> inshallah, let's offer salah. After salah, inshallah ta'ala, mubashiratan. Mubashiratan. Come right back to the lesson. Does that make sense, everybody? Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa hadda astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. Assalamu alaikum.